Hi, I'm Kathy Tadaldi, and uh, I want to welcome you to another episode of Paint Like No One's Watching. We're going to be painting these tulips today. We started them last week, and we got the background laid. Here's the one that we were working on. We've got the background laid in, and all of the leaves and, and stems, and today we're going to have fun. We're going to paint the, the tulips themselves in. All these little egg shapes are going to be nice uh, coral colored tulips. And so um, that's what we're going to work on today. So I've got a very, very limited palette. I thought it was, if you thought it was limited last week, this week all I have is the colors I need for the tulips. It's red. This is a cadmium red. This is a crimson. This is a cadmium yellow, white, titanium white. And this is more of that cerulean blue. And the only reason I have this here is in case I have a mess up and I need to come in close and, and reshape a tulip, I'll have some of that background color that I can mix up real quick. So we are just about ready to take off here. I do want to remind you, uh, if you if, in case you didn't watch my previous videos, always put something on over your clothes or else wear old clothes that you don't care about because acrylics, when they dry, they are permanent. If you get acrylics on your pants or something or on your shirt that's, that you're concerned about, stop right then and there you can go rinse it out while it's still wet but once it dries it's going to be there so that's my that's my warning to you make sure you have on a nice uh, a nice old paint shirt okay so we are going to start on our tulips now what i want you to remember about the tulips oh i want to show you how i got my color ideas this was i, I got pictures off the internet photographs this was the photograph that i i got the composition from but I didn't want them to be frilly. Those are called bearded tulips. I didn't want, I just wanted regular rounded tulips. But that was the idea that I started with and I, I gave it a different background. And then I wanted um, coral or peach colored tulips. So I got these different colors and kind of blended them together. That's the shape I'm using, but more of this color, maybe even a little bit of this in there. And of course, you can feel free to change it. You can make your, your tulips any color that you want to. You can use these tips that I'm giving you and go ahead and make your tulips whatever color you'd like. So that's the photographs that I'm working from and uh, this is, this is uh, the colors that I ended up using to create that nice peachy colored coral tulip. Now uh, for this one I'm using a brush that's called a filbert. I like that name. A filbert is a, um, well a filbert is a hazelnut and they, they, they're not really shaped like this, but I, I like to think of that whenever I, uh, whenever I think of the filbert brushes. I just like the name of them. And they're rounded on the end. They're, they're a flat brush, but they're rounded. And that's a good size to use, a good shape to use for this particular um, painting to make, the little, to make the eggs. All right, let's see why this one is not softening up for me. All right. I'm not going to use a palette knife this time because I'm not, I don't need a whole lot of paint. I usually mix with a palette knife if I need, need a big, large quantity. And this time I'm just going to mix it as I go. And I'm going to start with the red and the yellow together. And then add the white in. Actually, I used more of the crimson on this than I did the cadmium. So the crimson and the cadmium. I'm cadmium yellow with the white is how I got the color and if it looks too orangey you just add some more red if it's too dark you add some more white if it's too pink you add some more yellow ah, I'm kind of getting to that base color that I want to be working with for my flowers now I've mentioned before and I'll tell you again when I'm doing something that has highlights and low lights and, and, and I want it to look round, I want it to look like it has some volume, I like to put on a nice medium color first and then I can go in with darker shades for the shadows and lighter shades for the highlights. So for this one, I just want a nice medium peach color and then I'm going to darken the shadows and lighten the highlights. So this is about the color that I'm looking for. You can always dip over here and make it a little more yellowy. So, and the other thing to remember about the tulips is they're all the same size. I'm going to tell you a little secret. When I painted this first painting, that first tulip was bigger than the rest. 
and I kept thinking, oh, I can live with that, I can live with, you know, and then I couldn't. I had to go back in and reshape the bottom of it because it was about a half inch, maybe, yeah, about a half inch bigger than the rest of the tulips. And that just really bothered me. So I ended up re, uh, reshaping that tulip with the little bit of blue that I've got out here. So sometimes, sometimes you want to go in and change the edges or something. It's nice to have that background color ready to go. All right, so I'm going to, um, now, it looks like a sort of an egg shape, but it's really a little bit rounder and bigger at the bottom than it is at the top. We're gonna make this one a little more open at the top. All right, got the rounded shape at the bottom. try. I'm going to see about this other brush. I have a half, I call this a half filbert. I don't think that's what it's really called, but it's rounded on one side and straight on the other. I'm going to try that one for a minute and see how I like getting the edges with that because that's got a nice, nice uh, smooth, oh yeah, you can get a nice line with that one. Okay, well we'll get back to that. We're going to use a little bit lighter shade up here, lighten it up some, and We're just simply are making some... Now the reason, we're going to make these each flower look a little bit different from one another by where the petals are. They're all pretty much the same color and the same shape, but we're going to make the petals like on the first one here. We're going to uh, like Here's what I'm going to I'm going to dip it in the white a little bit and see, see this petal comes in like this. Kind of overlaps. And then it's a little bit darker in the background. Gonna mix in a little bit of our red and orange just to show that there's some depth here. And then the, the top it's the only part that's not smooth and round. It's kind of uneven because that's where the petals are coming out. They're about to bloom and they're, they're coming forth from the top up there. So, the side. I want to smooth that in a little bit. And on this side, the petal is out there. All right. A little bit lower than I meant to right there. Let's see if I can fix that before it dries. Sometimes when it's wet you can just smooth the paint off. Go back in with the line where I want it to be. There we go. All right. Now, to shade it, I'm going to add just purity red down at the bottom. This is not a time where I want to use a complementary color because if I was to put green with this red, it would muddy it up, and we don't want muddy tulips. So we're just going to go with a darker shade of red at the bottom for the shadowing. And as long as the paint's wet, you can just put it right on there and blend it in. Once it starts to dry, you can't really blend on the canvas. And we want to, I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there, just a touch, so we can have a little shade of that, that peachy red, that peachy, we don't really want it orange, we just want to imply that other shades coming in there. There we go, a little bit of the orange. Just a little bit. See, now it starts to look like it's got a round shape to it. I'm going to turn this canvas and get this this one little okay, this one little side here is not smooth enough for me so I'm going to go along right here and smooth that side out again alright there we go there we go now darken it a little bit more 
because it's kind of in shadow down here. A little bit of dark red, not dark red, just a touch of the of the uh, crimson. Mainly, I'm using the crimson on there. When I say red, I'm using, I'm dipping into the crimson, not so much the cadmium. All right, now you can see it's starting to take shape. I'm almost done with that tulip, as a matter of fact. Let me get a smaller brush and uh, put the white on it. I'm going to get this little skinny brush here. Get it nice and wet. We want this white to really flow whenever we make that little frill down the side of the tulip edge. As it's blooming, it's kind of uh, wrinkled a little bit. And so I'm mixing a little bit of pink with it, if you can see that. And then I'm going to start at the top here and come down the side. Oh, need more white. I think what I need is almost pure white to get the highlight that I want right there. be a little bit yellow too so I'm going to take some of that white and lighten up this yellow real 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 light so some of the highlight has a yellow tint to it I can already see I'm going to need to put some more white out there boy I go through white I've told you I don't use black very much but I use white three times faster than any other color oh. okay I'm back painting now I had a little brush issue but now I'm better and so I'm going back to uh, to kind of put a little volume into this this uh, tulip here. We're sticking with the same color scheme and that's carmine with white and a little bit of yellow. And I really like adding some flashes of yellow. Uh, it, when you're up close to it, it looks like you've done a lot. But when you back away, it's like, oh, that's just enough to make that look nice and peachy colored, which is what we're going for here. So let me add some more white to that and we'll have We'll have a little highlight along the uh, along the edge of the petal. The petal right here where it's coming out has a little white edge to it. And sometimes you have to just use pure white to get to get that highlight to show out. I started out with pink and it wasn't showing up well enough to suit me, so I'm gonna put some just plain old white. I think I'm done with that one. We might come back to it. I might I might bring that blue in close, but for now we're gonna because see these all look very similar, but you can see I'm gonna I'm gonna change up just a little bit of the placement of the petals so that you don't want them to all look like they were just stamped on there. They want to have a little bit of individuality, and when they look that much alike, sometimes it takes a little work. Okay, so next, next, next egg. <laughs> Tulip. Okay, so we're going to, mainly you want to keep them roughly the same size. They don't have to be absolutely identical, but within the same species, at least. Now, they also might be open at different um, levels. They might have different levels of bloominess. They might, this one might have opened yesterday, and it might be a little more open than the next one that part you can play around with a little.
Feel free to move your canvas around. If you feel better doing, I, I, my strokes usually move from left to right because I'm right-handed. And so sometimes, like I said, I, I move the canvas around so I can get that nice curve in, in a more comfortable position. All right, I'm back. We have a little camera switch over here, but I'm, I'm working on this one, and I'm using a little bit lighter pink to, uh, to blend the, the white down. Now, tulips, they, they tend to grow, so if you, I mean, they grow in the shape around the egg shape there, so if you want to uh, shape your brush strokes to come up around the it also, uh, in addition to using shading and highlighting, you can actually use your brush strokes to help indicate the shape of something. So we're going to bring it up to that little highlighted line there. And I'm going back to the white highlight there. Let me freshen that just a little bit. I want is to blend some of that lightness into the rest of the tulip without being too heavy handed here. We just want to show that it's blending right on down into it. Alright, maybe some up here too. We've got a little yellow going on here. I'm going to darken it down a little bit. Now I want to show you something I did with the blue. As you can see, this tulip has some areas around it where there's still white space. So that's one of the reasons why I said I'm going to put some blue on the canvas because I knew as we started painting the tulips they might not all be exactly the same size as that white space that I left. So the reasoning I took, and if you watch the part one of the video, I said this is a very simple background. It's cerulean blue and white. And if you keep it simple, it's real easy to uh, to mix up the color again when you want to go back in and like repair a little error or come up close to your flowers. So all you're really worried about is is it dark enough or light enough. So you don't want it to be too off, but you can just go back to your to your palette and uh, get the right shade blue to come up close to the. You see what I'm talking about? To come up close to it so it doesn't look like you forgot to paint part of it. That needs to be a little bit darker. Not by much. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. You ought to walk, look closely at a Van Gogh sometime. My goodness, he's got green in the sky where he got up close to his tree. And, you know, it's just, and he gets away with it. So it's like, okay, if it's good enough for Van Gogh, it's good enough for me. So you get it as close as you can to the, to the color that you started with. And you know what? Nobody's going to notice. You probably would notice if you didn't do it at all, but I'm just a stickler for not wanting raw canvas to show through. A lot of painters don't mind. It's actually a kind of a, almost an art form. It's a style. A lot of painters that paint a lot faster and freer. And you might get to that point. You might get to the point where you enjoy having a little bit of white space showing through. Right up to there. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's what I use the blue for, to come in and, and correct my little error there, if you want to call it an error. All right, now we're going to move on to the next one. This one was behind it. We're going to go ahead and we're not going to touch the line where they came in together. We're just going to work on this one next. We're just going. I'm, I, also, even though I want to paint the things that are in back first, I also like to paint from left to right, so I'm not... I don't have my hand in the wet paint any more than, uh, than I already do.
All right, I think I'm done with that one. Now we're going to work on this one because it's behind this one. And then this one, these two will be the last ones. All right, here we go. And you can, um, like I said, these are pretty much similar in color. You can go a little bit lighter and darker, but the one thing about tulips is that they really tend to look very, very similar once you get the right, the same, the same brand, the same, not brand, the same type of tulip. They're all, they look so similar. Okay, we're going to bring this out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. I am going to be painting over that side when I do the next one. That's the one that's going to be underneath this one a little bit. So we're going to do that one next, and then we're going to do that one. That's going to be our last one. So we're four down, two to go. And we're not really rushing it because this is the fun part. This is when you are really enjoying painting your tulips, trying to make them look a little bit different, while at the same time you're trying to make them look all alike. Now, how about that for a challenge, huh? Okay, so this one is a little different from that painting because I've got it overlapping this one and not that one. So, once again, we want, we want them about the same length. So it's going to come out a little further than what the white part shows that I have left for it. here. All right, there we go. I'm done with that one. I have one more to do right down here. And see how they are alike but different. They're not exactly alike. I've given each one a little bit of individuality there. All right. Last last Easter egg. Tulip. <laughs> All right. Let me blend. think I'm done. Wait, I want to, on that last one, I want to just put a little bit more light and dark right in the inside right here. Sometimes you can, there's a term called overworking it. <laughs> oh, when you're trying to do a portrait and you're working on someone's mouth, oh my word, is it easy to overwork a detail. And that's, uh, that's kind of what you have to avoid doing whenever you're working on, you, you get to a part and you, oh, you like it, no, you don't like it, you like it, you know, you don't like it. You go back and forth with it and then you realize at some point, you know, I'm overworking this. So you have to just kind of stop and back away and then if you want to come back later and do something to it, I'm going to put a little pure white on this and call it done. Ta-da! Stop, Kathy. Okay. 
All right, now one thing I need to do before I call this finished, I'm going to go back in with the blue, see the areas where I said I had uh, needed to uh, get close to the tulip right there. I'm going to just show you how with this blue, I, uh, I mix blue and white together. No red. If, you, if you're using the same little pool of white, make sure you don't have any pink in it. So you just want your blue and your white. And the only thing you're worried about here is the, the tint. Now, hue is the, is the shade of blue, but the tint is the lightness or darkness of it. So this is all about how much white and how much blue it's going to be mixed together to get the right color to go around that flower. Because we kind of changed our gradients around here. So that's dark. We're going to add more white. All right. I'm going to call that enough. Enough is enough is enough sometimes. All right, gang. There is our spring tulips, and the only thing that's left is to put it in a beautiful frame and sign it. And you know, I'll tell you a funny thing about signing it. On that one, I didn't sign it yet. I actually signed it in the bottom corner, and then I thought, no, that messes with that beautiful composition. So I painted over it, I wiped it off, and I'm going to sign it right here instead. I'm going to sign it in the leaves because I really like the flow of the composition. So even where you put your signature can sometimes affect the composition. And there you have it. I hope you love your painting. I hope you had a lot of fun. Now we're going to try something different. Um, I have been allowed to have some, uh, some guest artists come in. We've got lots of artistic talent here at the library. And so we're going to have, so I'll get next month, we're going to have a guest artist teaching uh, her ve version of painting. And that'll be Kathy Bond. She's here at the library. And she's going to do a painting for you next month. And then I should be back after that. So just stay happy and stay creative. Stay safe. And keep, I'd say keep reading, but I want you to keep painting.